Here's an overview of the Epoch 50 dual receiver kit. Contained in the kit is two identical receivers. For the purpose of this demonstration, we've configured one receiver to be the base, ending in serial number 3425, and one receiver to be the rover, ending in serial number 4156. The serial numbers are located on the white tag uh, underneath the receiver. Also included in the kit are three batteries to use with the rover, a tri brack with rotating center adapter here, as well as an accessory pole uh, to help mount the base receiver. In the other compartment is a pole bracket for the Ranger that is included in another box and a dual bay charger that charges the batteries for the Rover. There's a plug in the back that the power pack plugs into. You plug the power pack into the dual bay charger and then plug the power cord into the power pack and also to the wall. The final item included is a tape measure for measuring the height of the base. The Ranger included in the package has been pre-configured to work with both the base and rover. Start Survey Pro by hitting the flag and choosing Survey Pro from the drop down. Survey Pro will load. And give you the option of open an existing job or creating a new job. Choose create a new job. Give the job a name and hit next. Select the settings that work best for you and then push next. Enter a point, either a point that you'll be using later in the job or a dummy point that you can delete at a later point. Press finish. You're now ready to begin your survey by plus pressing survey and then starting your base. There are two, two receivers preloaded into the data collector. Choose the base, make sure the correction format is CMR plus, and press connect. You can verify the connection with your base by the presence of the dot next to the Bluetooth signal. Here again showing the A for autonomous position and the, the 15 satellites that are currently being tracked and used in the solution. Once you've established a connection with your base, you can choose whether you want to use ground or mapping plane. The data collector will load the current database and then give you the option of whether or not you want to use a geoid with the job. If you do want to use a geoid model, uh, the geoid for 09 has been preloaded in the data collector. Scroll down to geoid 09 CONUS. Press accept. While the base is averaging its position, now is the time to measure to the bottom edge of the receiver and input the measurement in feet. Again, you're bothering, measuring to the bottom of this edge and inputting that number in feet to the data collector. Here for this demonstration we've left the base a little bit low so that the screens and displays can be seen clearly. Uh, the, the recommended practice is to eliminate multipath error to get the base about six feet in the air. If you wanted to do some post-processing, there's internal memory in the base receiver. You could turn it on here uh, by selecting the drop-down 
menu. Otherwise, if it's left to off, you just push next. It then gives you the option of creating a new point in the job or using the existing point. For the demonstration, we're just going to use the existing 5,000, 5,000 point as the base and press next. Once you're connected to the base, it then gives you the option of connecting to the rover. The rover is the only receiver left shown in the box. Uh, verify that you're using CMR Plus and press connect. One other thing to mention is once your base receiver is set, you'll begin to see the TX, the transmit light, flashing once approximately every second. This verifies to you that you are broadcasting a signal from your base receiver that your rover can pick up. When you've connected to the rover receiver, you can verify the connection by looking for the dot next to the Bluetooth symbol. Uh, you can also see uh, the radio light begin to flash, indicating that you're receiving a radio signal from the base. Uh, and now in the display, we see that we are in a fixed position uh, with 14 satellites. The data collector gives you the option of changing the height of your pole. Here we're set to measure to the bottom of the antenna mount, and since we're using a two meter pole, uh, we can just type in the letters two, M. and it will convert that to feet. Then you have the option of occupying a control point or starting the survey with a one point calibration at the base. Here you can see on the data collection screen that we're fixed, our radio is 100%. Uh, if you press the point screen, you can gather more information uh, and then choose to store your point just as you would in any other survey probe program.